Why do I feel so drained all the time? Why do I feel like I'm walking on eggshells with him? Why do I always end up apologizing when he's the one who started the argument? Why does he make me feel like I'm overreacting for having normal emotional reactions? Can you relate to any of these? If it is a yes, there's a very good chance your man is a covert narcissist. And if you're in a relationship with a covertly narcissistic man, his approach will be much more subtle than that of a more overt narcissist. So, if you've never dealt with one before, it is like getting caught in a riptide. You might not see the danger until it's too late and you're already being swept away. So, here are the 10 red flags to help you identify a covert narcissist in a romantic relationship. The last one is actually the biggest telltale sign of anyone who is a narcissist or who at least has some narcissistic tendencies. But first, just a quick reminder, this information is for educational purposes only. If you need help with your specific situation, please reach out to a mental health professional who specializes in MPD. So, here are the signs. 1. He fakes empathy. In the early, love-bombing stage of your relationship, he probably got you to trust him pretty quickly, right? He probably asked you deep questions about your family, past traumas and relationships, and he seemed genuinely interested and empathetic. That's because he was gathering information which he later could use against you. But as your relationship progresses, he becomes dismissive or blatantly cold when you bring up your needs or emotions. This is to be fully expected, since his empathy was never real. It was a tool, a strategy to reel you in. Now that he's comfortable, he doesn't need to maintain the facade. You're left feeling confused, betrayed, and often questioning your own sanity. Two, he uses micromanipulation. It's a form of subtle manipulation that's hard to pinpoint, and it really messes with your mind. For instance, he casually mentions he might lose his job because of some new changes at work. But a day or two later, when you bring this up, he brushes it off and accuses you of overreacting, saying everything at work is fine and that you misunderstood him. This tactic not only keeps you emotionally unbalanced, but also dependent on him for the correct version of reality, tightening his control over the relationship. Backhanded compliments and so-called constructive criticism are also micro-manipulations, all aimed at putting you down and unsettling you. For example, let's say your desk is not very organized. He, on the other hand, is a neat freak. He might say something like, I can't imagine being able to focus when my desk is this messy. It's really fascinating how you can accomplish so much. I could never. He also belittles your contributions and undermines you in small things. For example, let's say you're loading your dishwasher after dinner. He's helping by rearranging and adjusting every single piece you put in. As he's doing it, he is just chuckling, he's lighthearted, he's kind of playful, and you feel like you can't even show him just how annoyed you are because, well, he's just messing with you, right? Definitely a micro-manipulation. Definitely an emotional abuse he uses to control you. You share your opinion on something and he immediately starts to argue, but soon you realize he's essentially repeating what you just said, only rephrasing it slightly. Suddenly, because it's now in his words, it's considered the correct viewpoint. Three, he often prioritizes others over you. It makes you feel like your needs don't matter because he seems so dedicated to helping everyone else. This is confusing, especially when he ignores you while being super nice to others. This act of kindness is all about control and looking good to the outside world. He keeps a lot of casual friends who often adore him. When you try to tell people about the struggles with him, they don't get it. They only see the nice guy act, making it really hard for you to explain the pain and difficulty of being with him. This gap makes it tough to find the support you really need. 4. He can't handle even the smallest criticism because he has a fragile ego. Deep down, he feels ashamed of not being good enough, and he tries hard to hide that. He doesn't want to look bad in your eyes, so he avoids conflict at all costs. This means you can't really talk things through or get your needs met when he's upset with you. Often you won't even realize you've done anything wrong because he won't be straightforward with you. Being direct could damage his nice guy image, making it impossible to resolve any conflict with him. 5. He's super secretive about his personal stuff to keep control over what you know. He hides his bank accounts, investments, and debts, leaving you clueless about where you stand financially, especially if he's the main one bringing in money. His phone, computer, and all his gadgets are locked down with passwords and he doesn't let anyone else use them or even peek at what's on them. He also only tells you bits and pieces of things, skipping important details, saying you don't need to worry about it. 6. He projects his own failings onto you. For example, if he's being dishonest, he'll start accusing you of being dishonest. There are several reasons why covert narcissists do this. 
But here are the main three, diversion, control, and justification. Let's say he accuses you of cheating on him, a perfect smokescreen. While you're busy defending yourself, you're less likely to notice or address his actual infidelity. By confusing you, he gains control over the narrative and the emotional tone of the relationship, at least for the time being, by accusing you of the very actions he is guilty of can psychologically justify his own behavior. He might feel less guilt about his cheating if he can convince himself that you're also unfaithful. 7. He stonewalls you. Sometimes he might say, I meant to get it done, but often that's just an excuse to drag things out. Why does he do this? Stonewalling lets him control the conversation. By not communicating, he avoids discussions that might force him to look at his own actions or take any responsibility. He needs this to keep up his perfect image. This tactic also tips the balance of power in his favor. If you feel ignored and unimportant, you'll start trying harder for his attention, becoming more yielding to his needs. That way, he ends up holding all the power, deciding when and how you two communicate. 8. He makes you feel guilty for his mistakes. This blame, shifting manipulation serves him three different ways. First off, it helps him protect his fragile ego. Since he can't handle criticism at all, by blaming you, he dodges having to admit his flaws. Second, this strategy lets him keep control in your relationship, because if you feel like you're always messing up, you end up doing whatever he wants. Lastly, shifting the blame can really isolate you from friends and family. You start depending too much on his approval and might find it tough to reach out for help. 9. He won't come right out and say he thinks he's smarter than you, but he'll drop little hints here and there that make it pretty clear he believes he's on another level intellectually and sees you as less capable. He does this to boost his own ego and calm any insecurities he has about himself. It also makes it easier for him to control you because you start questioning your own decisions and might rely on him more. By hinting instead of saying it outright, he avoids any direct challenges. This way, if you ever call him out, he can play it off like you misunderstood him, keeping up his act of being the misunderstood one, not the manipulative one. 10. He's a shitty listener. Okay, of course. Like I already mentioned when I talked about his lack of empathy, he does listen in the very beginning of your relationship while he is collecting data on you to use it against you in the future. But as your relationship evolves, you will start noticing that he is not really listening to you. Why? Because unless you're saying something that directly benefits him, he simply isn't interested in your thoughts, feelings, or needs. He doesn't care about truly connecting or your well-being. His focus is on his own needs and wants. Let's say you're sharing details about your day. If he's itching to share his own story, he'll just wait for you to finish, barely grasping what you said before he jumps in with his own thing. Sometimes he might even interrupt you mid-sentence to shift the focus back to himself, or he'll nod along without really engaging with what you're telling him. Once you wake up to the reality that you're living with a covert narcissist, things get even tougher. Now you've got to do something about it. It's exhausting to carry the weight of a relationship where you're doing most of the work. It's crucial to open up to people you trust about what's been going on. It's time to think about your own mental and physical health. Consider therapy, especially with someone who understands narcissism, so they can help you see the relationship for what it is, not what it appears to be. If there are any other red flags that you've seen, please comment below. And if there's anything else you want to learn about NPD, please check out my playlist called Surviving Narcissism. See you in the next video.